Welcome to Kingston University. Now I understand arriving in a new country can be exceptionally daunting, but the aim of this video is to provide you with a fair amount of information so that your life here isn't as daunting as it could seem. It is important to be careful about the money you're spending and make sure that you budget. Here are some top tips for budgeting. Be aware of the conversion rate so that you know how much you're spending. Put money aside for rent, transport, phone credit, food, and entertainment each month. Use public transport instead of taxis where possible, as it is much cheaper. Try to travel off-peak after 9.30 a.m. Book tickets in advance if possible to save money. Cook at home instead of going out to eat in restaurants. Use your NUS extra card to get money off lots of different things. And buy your food at the cheaper supermarkets like Asda, Lidl, Tesco, and Sainsbury's. Supermarkets like Waitrose and Marks and Spencer's are more expensive. Use your NES Extra card to get discounts. The International Student Calculator is a really useful website to help you budget. It has a lot of useful and fun tips. It's very easy to travel around Kingston and London using public transport. In addition to the London buses, Kingston University provides a free bus service which travels between various sites. If you intend to travel around London a lot, you can either get a bus pass, which can either last for a week or a month, or get yourself an Oyster card, like one of these. They cost three pounds to buy, and you simply top them up like you would a regular cell phone. Now the easy thing with this is that while a single fare on a bus costs two pound, when you use your Oyster card, a single fare is only a pound. All you do when you get on the bus is you swipe it on the yellow pad on the bus, and there you go. You can also use your Oyster card on the tube and on some trains. You can travel into central London from one of three main stations in the Kingston area. They're Kingston, Norberton, or Surbiton stations. And now, once you arrive in central London, you can use the tubes to travel around. The train into central London costs £6.50 for a return ticket if you travel after 9.30 a.m. If you wish to travel around London once you get there, you can, of course, purchase a travel card instead. The travel card costs £7.50 and includes unlimited bus, train, and tube journeys around central London. Now, most public transport services finish at midnight. Now, if you're going to be in central London later than that, make sure you plan your journey back beforehand. There is a night bus that travels from central London into Kingston, so it's usually wise that you know where you can catch it from and where it stops in Kingston. Some of the buses run for 24 hours, but with a reduced service. So if you find that you do not wish to catch the bus home, you can always catch a taxi or minicab. If you are getting a taxi, make sure it's a black cab or a licensed minicab. Never get into an unlicensed minicab. If you're unsure of which taxi to get, send a text of HOME to 60835 and you'll receive a reply with the number for one black cab and two licensed minicab companies in your area. If you're traveling further in the UK or into Europe, the two nearest airports are London Heathrow and London Gatwick. These are two of the largest airports in the country and from there you can fly to many destinations. From central London, you can take the Eurostar to a number of different destinations in Europe. Now here are some top tips as to what to do before you travel. Always book accommodation before you travel. Let friends and family know your itinerary. Make sure you know the location of the appropriate embassy in the country you are traveling to. Do not carry large amounts of cash with you and make sure you keep your passport safe and take a photocopy of it with you. If you're traveling around the UK, there are very good train links to most locations and to all the main cities. There are also coach companies which operate from London to most locations around the country, and you can find that they are much cheaper than the trains, especially if you book in advance. In the UK, there are lots of different ways that you can spend your free time. There are an abundance of restaurants, bars, pubs, nightclubs, bowling alleys, cinemas, theme parks, museums and galleries, and theatres. Here are some useful things to remember when going out. You can legally buy and drink alcohol if you're 18 or older, but it is illegal to purchase alcohol for someone who is under the age of 18. 
If you do not drink alcohol, there are lots of non-alcoholic beverages available. It is illegal to smoke inside public places in the UK, though lots of pubs, bars and restaurants do provide an outside smoking area. People in the UK tip in restaurants, but not in bars, and the standard rate to tip is 10%. Closing times vary for clubs, bars and pubs. However, some nightclubs will stay open till as late as 3am, though the majority of places do close at 12am. There are often student nights at bars and clubs where you can get discounted entry and drinks if you show your NUS Extra card, so look out for these. When you arrive in the UK, you'll probably need to purchase a phone, as it can be quite expensive to use your phone from your home country. You've got two options with this, your pay-as-you-go phone or your contract phone. Now the pay-as-you-go phone is fairly easy. You purchase credit and then you place the credit onto your phone. As long as you've got credit on your phone, you can make calls, you can send text messages. If you have none, you cannot make calls or send text messages. Now the contract phone is a little different in that you receive a monthly bill for this. To keep an eye on your spending, it's probably easier to get a pay-as-you-go phone. There are lots of different networks, so make sure you shop around for the best deal. London is a really easy place to get to from Kingston, um, and it's a great place to explore. Most of the famous tourist attractions are in central London, ranging from royal palaces, historic buildings, famous theatres and shopping areas. More information about attractions in London can be found on the internet. If you do require any further information about the university or its facilities, please check on Student Space. I hope this film has provided you with a lot of useful information. I know you're going to have a great time, so enjoy yourself.